I was in town filming some scenes for another video and I decided I wanted to stop by and check out a history museum that's here. So today we are in Tallahassee, Florida and we're going to be checking out the Tallahassee Museum of Florida History. This should be a good one. I have, uh, I've not been inside of this museum before. Looking it up, it looked like a uh, neat place to visit. So we'll see. I could be right, it could be a neat place, or I could be wrong, and it could be a complete dud. They're advertising on the outside of it here. It's a library, a museum, and an archives building. They also have traveling exhibits. Museum entrance downstairs. Well, apparently the museum starts at the Ice Age and ends at World War II, so. Look at this giant armadillo. A bunch of fossils. Here, here's some old arrowheads. Bison skull. Oh, wow. A mastodon tusk. That's a real live mastodon tusk. There's uh, even a mastodon vertebrae right there. The actual shell of a now extinct giant land tortoise. Look at that big guy. This is the actual skeleton of a giant mastodon who lived 28 million years ago. Fun fact for you, dinosaurs never lived in the state of Florida. I know it's crazy to believe, but more than 65 million years ago, before the dinosaurs became extinct, the state of Florida was underwater. After the land emerged from the ocean, this giant mastodons like this started coming onto the land. And that was 28 million years ago. Over here around this corner, they have some really, really old canoes. But in a land filled with water, they had to be able to get around somehow. This ceramic human figure here, or this wood carving bird. There's a bowl. A pelican totem. Down here on the floor is a map of the state. The conquistadors. It's a reproduction of a brass sword, reproduction rifle, and crossbow. Check out this outfit. They have a giant conquistador, a Spanish exploring ship built in here. This is really cool. I guess with the sea all around, the main way to get here was by ship. Inside of this case here is remnants of an unearthed astro blade. Now I'll tell you, this is really, really cool. Of course, this rope was not, but you know, like this piece and this piece and this piece were an astro blade. That's what they used to tell the height of the sun so they could navigate. That is really awesome. Now we're getting into its colonial history. There's a giant cannon right here. Six pound cannonball. Archaeologists found all of this Chinese porcelain that was being brought into Florida and somehow these old firearm mechanisms that they unearthed. There's some really, really old swords. You can tell that the metal is rusted and deteriorated. A bayonet here. Here's a, a few hilts and a whole sword with a hilt there. And that's an awesome find. These old sp spikes. These would have held a ship together. There's like an old axe there and some old, really old pliers right there. Here's a uh, really old hammer. In this case is full of silver, like silver currency. And over here is all gold coins. Gold, here's golden chains. 
all of this gold and silver it's all real it's all real they unearth it out of the Gulf of Mexico out in the waters I'm certainly impressed with this place uh, I didn't I did not think it was gonna have this much in it at all these are recreations but this is what the fort wall would look like of these guard towers now of course this is a recreation but look they even have a cannonball wedged into it there this is a real Spanish musket dated 1732 that's still in this condition and the, this is also a real Miculet pistol over here this is a muzzle section of a cannon and a cannonball there's a picture of a fort we saw a couple that look like this over off Dolphin Island now th this is pretty interesting these doors are off of a real church during the colonial time St. Augustine's Church in fact they were hand carved everything is still there all the way to the locking mechanisms so they could lock the door the handle here on the outside man and this bell stood outside of the church cool story about this bell they actually found this in a pond near Madison Florida it was just down in the bottom of the pond that bell was stationed outside of St. Augustine's Church. This is a real U.S. Army officer's coat, 1832. And a Seminole Warrior Leader's outfit, 1832. Here's some more firearms. These would have been arms of the Second Seminole War. Look at that, with U.S. stamped in it right there, and the hands shaking. That's, that's an amazing detail. This is the uniform of Captain Winston Stevens, the second Florida Cavalry of the Confederate States of America. It looks like now we are getting into the Civil War. This, I've seen many times before, this contraption would go with officers on the battlefield. This is an officer's traveling desk. And they actually have handwritten letters here dated 1861, December 22nd. This would have been a Civil War medical officer's surgeon uh, field kit so they could saw off limbs and remove bullet fragments and all that good stuff just out on the middle of a battlefield. Pepper box pistol right there. I hadn't seen one of those in quite a while. Check this out. It's a tree that's got several cannonballs lodged into it. This was from the Battle of Chickamauga. This old chest here on top of it is a spyglass, some shoulder pins, a watch, a pocket watch right there. An old rifle. Oh wow, look at that drum. It says that is not a reproduction. That is a real drum, a military side drum carried during the Civil War. Down here we have a used field surgery kit with a tourniquet and saw blade. In fact, uh, this kit was used at the very end of, war, uh, of the Civil War and it actually amputated this guy's arm. See his arm, his left arm there is amputated. The saw right here in the front is what cut his arm off. That is absolutely nuts. I've been to a lot of history museums and I've seen a lot on the Civil War and I've never seen documentation of a particular field surgical kit documented to a person. These are really cool, the Confederate battle flags worn. There's a bullet hole, cannon hole going right through the middle of that one. This one's tattered and worn, the whole right corner is missing off of it. It's from the 5th Regiment. This is really cool. This is a boat howitzer. It's a 12 pound cannon. It was on board the USS Benville. Look at the shape that this cannon in is here. This is an actual cannon in really good shape. All of this stuff is, even these Union artillery soldiers uniforms. There's their, the brass shoulder tassels, some dominoes. Now we are entering into, after the war, the emancipation. I'm not sure what this is. 
It's got two giant wheels on it, maybe. Uh, I guess it had something to do with logging. Look how old it is. The wood is just rotten. Here's a lot of other tools they found from the logging age. These are the saws they used to cut down the trees. This, would, this is a pea hauler. And right next to it is the velvet bean sheller. The citrus. This is a washing tub back there. It would bring them up this. I guess they would roll through this tube here to get cleaned and continue moving up the contraption here. This is the dryer. They would come out of the dryer down into the polisher. They would come out down here on the end and fall into these packing bins to be packed up and shipped out. That's really cool. I, I, again, I've been to a lot of museums. That's the first. And I'm gonna tell you something else that's really cool that they have in this museum. Cars. It's not an automobile museum. This is the 1911 Baker electric car. There's a the giant electrical board. Oh, I know. I would recognize this one anywhere. It's a 1925 Ford Model T runabout. I could recognize that one anywhere with its crank here on the front of it. Really cool shell gas pump there. They actually have a light in the shell. It's the first time I've seen one of these ever. Uh, it almost looks like an early mobile home. And that's exactly what it is. It's a 1923 Model T truck converted to a camper. It was called the Tin Can Camper. Again, we've been to a lot of museums all over the country and I've never seen one of those before. That's incredible. We've all seen one of these before. This giant bicycle, that's really cool. None of this is recreations. All this is the real stuff. And right here is a horse-drawn carriage dated back to 1910. I just can't get over the mobile home. I had no clue that there was a Model T mobile home. This is their traveling exhibit that's going on right now. This is Surf's Up Florida. Here's a woman's bathing suit from 1900. It looks like a dress. It doesn't look like a bathing suit. The evolution of surfboards. 1940s swimming trunks here. Surf's up, dude. Across the USA. Over here we got a ship. Looks like the end of a paddle boat. This steam engine was used on a paddle wheel boat, the USS Albany. Here's a, it looks like maybe that's part of the paddle wheel there, maybe. It's all deteriorated from being in the water. Wow, look at this old buoy system here. This thing is so old. This was a rope right here at one time. It's so old that it's like rock. I mean, it's that hard. The very front of the ship. The captain's wheel. But the captain's <laughs> right behind the captain's wheel would have been the captain's cabin. He would have slept there, had a washing area. It would also have had a door right here in the center. He can, can jump right out of bed, right up to the captain's wheel if he needed. Y'all just hang out right there. I'm gonna catch a ride on up the Chattahoochee. The model of the ship that we're standing on right now is the Hiawatha, which can be seen in a few of these photos. We're done with the riverboat era. We're gonna go into probably one of my favorite eras in history, World War II. There's an old radio, some old goggles, and a helmet. There's a navigation computer. Our pilots back then. Coca-Cola playing cards from World War II. Women's Red Cross uniform. Nurses were worn. There's a Western Union here sent to Miss Martha Thomas. 
It says, I deeply regret to inform you that your son, Sergeant Ernest Thomas Jr., United States Marine Corps, was killed in action on the 3rd of March at night in 1945 at Iwo Jima Volcano Islands. And here's a few helmets. Oh, look at this one. This is a German Army Infantry Lieutenant's dress jacket. That's the real deal. Over here is a German prisoner of war guys would have to wear while in custody. Check out this old camera here. It's a lot different than, per se, the one that I'm holding in my hand right now. Here's a few more cameras here. This one uh, is a Kodak from 1950. This one's a Kodak Retina camera from 1952. And last but not least, USS Florida 1911 is also on display right here. And that is going to do it for the Tallahassee Museum of Florida History. I was very much impressed with this place. Very much impressed. I definitely recommend it if you're in the area of Tallahassee, Florida. I am gonna head out of the area now so I can finish getting the shots that I need, reason why I'm in this area, so I can move on to something else. So I'm gonna end this video now. I wanna thank you all for watching. And I will see you again tomorrow. I hope you all have a great day. And uh, I hope it's warming up for everybody.